Good morning, Bridge of Hope family. We are so excited that you welcomed us into your home today for worship and service. We recognize that in today's world of technology, you could have chosen virtually anywhere to attend service, but God intended for you to be here with us today. And for that, we are truly grateful. Please bow your heads and pray with me. Lord Jesus, we just thank you for this day. We thank you for this opportunity to once again come together and worship and praise you virtually. We ask that you be with Pastor as he brings forth the message. We ask that you just give us open ears and open hearts to receive this message, Lord Jesus. We also ask that you touch all those who may be listening now or in the future. And that you also touch those who may be sick who may need a healing power from you, a deliverance from you, or just some sort of intervention from you, Lord. We ask that you just intervene on their behalf. We ask all those things in your name. Amen. Grace what have you done murdered for me on that cross accused in absence of wrong my sin washed away in your blood too much to make sense of it all i know that your love breaks my fall scandal of grace you died in my place so my soul will live and all to be like you to give all I have just to know you Jesus there's no one beside you forever the hope in my heart Whoa. Where is your sting? Your power is dead as my sin. The cross has taught me to live. In mercy, my heart now to sing. The day and its trouble shall come. I know that your strength is enough. Scandal of grace, you died in my place, so my soul will live and all to be like you, to give all I have just to know you. Jesus, there's no one beside you, forever the hope in my heart, and all to be like you. All I have just to know you Jesus, there's no one beside you Forever the hope in my heart Oh And it's all Because of you, Jesus It's all Because of you, Jesus It's all It's all because of you, Jesus. It's all because of you, Jesus. It's all because of you, Jesus. My soul will live and all to be like you. To give all I have just to know you. Jesus, there's no one beside you. Forever the hope in my heart To be like you To give all I have just to know you Jesus, there's no one beside you Forever the hope in my heart Forever the hope in my heart
You're a man of your word, yes. All things are possible When we believe Old chains are breakable When we receive your way You keep your promises If you said it, we believe it If you said it If you said it, we believe it If you said it, we believe it Cause you're a man of your word If you said it, we believe it Oh, 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 oh. If you said it, we believe it You're a man Cause you're a man of your word All things are Yes, they are. When we receive your way, you keep your promises. If you said it, we believe it. If you said it, if you said it, we believe it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If you said it, if you said it, we believe it. You're a man. You're a man. Of your word, if you said it, we believe it. Oh, 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 oh. If you said it, we believe it. Cause you're a man of your word. And we have this confidence that you'll finish what you started. God, you have never failed. You won't start with me. You're present in every step. You're patient in every heartache. And God, you have never failed. You won't start with me.
try to tell me I am who you say I am If you said it, you I believe it If you said it, we'll believe it, yeah If you said it, we believe it If you said it, we believe it, yeah If you said it, we believe it, yeah I am what I am Because the great I am It speaks over me I am what I am Because the great I am It speaks over me Good morning, Bridge of Hope, and everyone joining us uh, around North Carolina, the, uh, North America, and the world. Welcome again to our service today, and so excited again to worship together in the Lord's communion. I want to read a passage of scripture in 1 Corinthians chapter 11. Of course, this is where we take our a communion passage from, but I want to read verses 28 to 32. It says, let a person examine himself then, and so eat of the bread and drink of the cup. For anyone who eats and drinks without discerning the body, eats and drinks judgment on himself. That is why many of you are weak and ill and some have died. But if we judged ourselves truly, we would not be judged. But when we are judged by the Lord, we are disciplined so that we may not be condemned along with the world. I want to say this about our communion is that the gravity of this special ceremony is picked up by the Apostle Paul when he lets us know, examine ourselves, that we just uh, don't come into this without reverence, without contemplation and even considering uh, our, our own relationship with the Lord. So he says, examine yourself and, and do not take part of this unworthily, both from a moral standpoint, make sure you are walking with the Lord and not outside of his will. And also from, from a body standpoint, um, from the spiritual body, the church of God, make sure you are in right relations with your brothers and sisters. So today, as we uh, bless the elements that we're about to take that they would no longer be considered common. We ask that you examine yourself. Lord, uh, consecrate me as I take this communion. May my faith and love for you and my brothers and sisters honor you. Let's pray. Father, we thank you today once again for this opportunity to come together to the table of the Lord. We ask, Father, that you would touch these elements, that they would no longer be common. They are crackers and drink now, but Lord, may these crackers represent the body of Jesus. May this drink represent the blood of Jesus. And Father, seeing that we are at the table eating your body and drinking your blood, I ask, Father, that we would come to this table prepared, worthy we're not worthy in ourselves but we come in the righteousness of Christ we come with our faith placed solely in the finished redemptive work of Jesus and as a result we honor you with our life and we recognize our brothers and sisters as our brothers and sisters in the Lord oh may we not eat unworthily but may you be glorified in Jesus' name. Amen. So as you take your elements, we'll be reading from 1 Corinthians 11, verses 23 to 27. The Apostle Paul says, For I received from the Lord what I also delivered to you, that the Lord Jesus, on the night when he was betrayed, took bread and when he had given thanks he broke it and said this is my body 
which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Eat all of it. In the same way, he also took the cup after supper saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Drink all of it. Thank you, Lord. For as often as you eat this bread and drink the cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. And we say, amen, Lord. Come, Lord Jesus, come. Thank God that we are able to eat together and drink together. Fellowship as brothers and sisters in the Lord, recognizing that we are one in Christ. Thank God that the Lord has welcomed us to his table, saying that we are in him. We are in his kingdom. We are in the body of Christ, the church of God. How wonderful it is to know him. God bless you, Bridge. Good morning, Bridge of Hope. It's good to be with you this morning. It's time to worship the Lord with our tithe and our offering. I'd like to begin with a scripture today in Malachi chapter 3, verses 10 through 12. The Bible says, Bring the full tithe into the storehouse, that there may be food in my house and thereby put me to the test, saith the Lord of hosts, if I will not open the windows of heaven for you and pour down for you a blessing un until there is no more need. I will rebuke the de devourer for you so that, so that it will not destroy the fruits of your soil and the vines of your field shall not fail to bear, saith the Lord of hosts. Then all nations will call you blessed for you will be a Land of delight, saith the Lord of hosts. What a powerful promise that is from the Word of God. Uh, I'd like to encourage all of us uh, that are part of the Bridge of Hope family to uh, bring your tithes and your uh, offerings to the Lord and give them faithfully to the Lord because He is the one that we're worshiping today with our tithe and our offering. And our, tithe, our offering today will be going to our pastor and we'd like to uh, worship the Lord with a special love offering for Him. And uh, we'd just like for you to uh, give as the Lord impresses on you to give. Uh, there's two ways to give. You can give through our church website, through the Alexio app, or you can also give through the mail. If you'd like to mail your offering in, Bridge of Hope Church, uh, P.O. Box 370, Pleasant Garden, North Carolina, 27313. Let us bow for prayer. Great God of heaven, we thank you for the opportunity you've given to us today to worship you in giving and the giving of our tithe. We ask you, Lord God, to bless each and every gift that's given and the giver as well. We thank you for our pastor and pray a special blessing upon his life that you would bless them, strengthen them, and give them good health. Lord, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you, Bridge. Welcome again, Bridge. Glad, of course, to be in the house of God and thankful for everyone who has led our worship and 
led us in prayer and giving. And um, thank you also for those of you who have been contributing uh, in benevolence, groceries to the bereaved and the uh, families in need, uh, particularly those sick uh, through COVID uh, and, and other maladies. We thank God for you. Here we are in Matthew chapter 5, continuing in the Sermon on the Mount. Matthew chapter 5, verses 17 to 20. And it reads as follows. Do not think that I have come to abolish the law or the prophets. I have not come to abolish them, but to fulfill them. For truly I say to you, until heaven and earth pass away, not a yoda or a dot will pass from the law until all is accomplished. Therefore, whoever relaxes one of the least of these commandments and teaches others to do the same will be called least in the kingdom of heaven. But whoever does them and teaches them will be called great in the kingdom of heaven. For I tell you, unless your righteousness exceeds that of the scribes and Pharisees, you will never enter the kingdom of heaven. May God add the blessing to the reading of his word. Today we begin a new series, Real Righteousness. Real Righteousness. Bow your heads with me, please. Father, I thank you today. We bow our hearts in reverence to you. Uh, we honor the Holy Spirit who is working in our midst, moving us in deeper fellowship with you. We honor Christ, our Redeemer and Savior, and we honor you, Holy Father, who is above all and in all. And we ask that your word would be broken for us, that we may eat it and be changed, be exalted today. I pray victory as a result of your word. I pray healing as a result of your word. I pray God liberty and freedom and the fullness of the Holy Spirit as we yield to you, Lord, and your word. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Real righteousness. So we've just finished walking through the Beatitudes and Jesus' declaration to his citizens regarding how he viewed them and how did he view them? He said, I see you as the salt of the earth and I see you, my disciples, my citizens, as the light of the world. And now he pivots to addressing the practical nature of the kingdom, of life in his kingdom. And his citizens, he expresses, are to be truly righteous. They are called to live out real righteousness. Jesus lets us know that real righteousness begins with a healthy understanding of Jesus. Look with me at verse 17. He says, do not think that I have come to abolish the law or the prophets do not think that I, what we think of Jesus, who we think he is, and why we think he came impacts our righteousness. How many of you remember uh, Mark chapter 8 and 27 where Jesus says, who do they say that I am? And the answer to that question matters. We are, because we are justified by our faith in him. Who he, we have to understand who he is and who others are in comparison to him. Disciples, we have to have a right understanding of Jesus because our righteousness is tied to who he is and who we understand he is, who he has revealed himself to be. In fact, let me be clear. Real righteousness is clear about what Jesus will and will not do. Look at verse 17. He says, do not think that I have come to abolish the law or the prophets. I have not come to abolish them, but 
to fulfill them. We must understand what Jesus will do, why he has come. He says, don't, I have not come to abolish what you have been taught in the word. I have not come to abolish the law as given in, in the Pentateuch, the first five books of the, uh, of the Bible or the Psalms or even the words of the prophets. No, I have not come to say that those no longer exist. No, I have come rather to fulfill them. I have come to make them clear to you. I may have come, uh, I, I came not to destroy that, but to destroy the kingdom of darkness. In fact, it's very interesting when he says, do not think that I have come to destroy the law. When he says destroy or loosen or relax, the image that we should have is, don't think that I have come to uh, tear down a house that was weak. <laughs> think of a house, if you're building, you're building a house with wood and you got nails. Think of a house with nails, but the nails aren't fully in. And they're sticking out. And it only takes you to lean on the wall. It only takes for the wind to blow. It only takes for a little movement here and there. And everything's going to come crashing down. I have not come to crash this thing down. This thing is stable. This thing is settled in heaven. I have not come to destroy the world, the word of God. No, I have come to fulfill it. Real righteousness is clear about what Jesus fulfills. He came to fulfill or accomplish or live out the word that we might live with God. That's the reason why Jesus has come to fulfill the word so that he might enable us to live with God. He fulfills our ability to keep the law by living by and giving us the Holy Spirit. That's why everything Jesus did, he did to, to live out the scripture. Isaiah 61, the spirit of the Lord is upon me and he hath anointed me. And so when Jesus came, what did he do? He came full of the Holy Spirit. Why did he come full? Because one, he was fulfilling that prophetic word of of Isaiah, that same word that Moses said that there's coming a day when my servant will be full of the spirit and he will put the spirit upon all of his servants. But it was so that we also might have that model of being filled with the spirit. He fulfills the messianic intent of the law by being the word made flesh. He came to live out the demands of the Redeemer, the Savior, the Lord, the one who would destroy the kingdom of darkness. And he, why did he do that? So that he might free us from the bondage of darkness. He fulfilled the expectation of the law by being both the unblemished lamb and the embodiment of holiness. He is the sacrifice. And he did that. He came to be the sacrifice that God demanded for the sins of the world. God demanded that sin would be judged and Jesus said, well, you can judge me, Father. I will die on their behalf to satisfy the justice that is required. Do you understand who Jesus is? Everybody ought to know who Jesus is because knowing Jesus And righteousness is the only thing that makes us able to live with God. Apart from Jesus, we are not able to, to know or to truly be righteous. Jesus fulfills righteousness. Jesus reveals righteousness. Jesus it, it brings us into righteousness. Realize he makes it possible for us to truly be righteous. He justifies us by our faith in him. He regenerates us, makes us born again by the Holy Spirit so that we might live righteous, godly lives. Real righteousness first comes to those who understand who Jesus is and why he came. Look at Matthew 5 and 18. 
it talks about not a Yoda, not a dot, and he's, it, it's the equivalent. It, obviously, these are symbols in, in Hebrew, but it, it's the equivalent of a comma or, or a hyphen or, or exclamation mark. He said, listen, none of these things, not the least mark in a sentence, will be changed from the word of God until it's fulfilled. In other words, my word will not be void, be empty, be destroyed. No, my word will come to pass. Look at what he says. For truly I say to you, until heaven and earth pass away, not a yoda, not a dot will pass from the law until all is accomplished. And he goes on to say, whoever relaxes one of the least of these commandments and teaches others to do the same will be called least in the kingdom of God. Listen, this is what we must understand about the word. The word will endure. The word, the word will endure beyond even the world. Heaven and earth will pass away before my word ends. The word of God is taught by Christ is real righteousness. And this is why he, he makes that statement in verse 18, until heaven and earth pass away, nothing of my word, my law, will be nullified. No, everything will be accomplished. And the reason why he says that is because the word of God is what reveals righteousness. He's, he makes this emphasis so that we recognize how significant the word of God is for his mission and for our lives. Paul puts it like this, that we've got to embrace all of scripture in second Timothy chapter three, verse 15, he says this in verse 16, actually all scripture is breathed out by God and it's profitable for teaching, for reproof, for correction, for training in righteousness that the man and woman of God may be complete equipped for every good work. Here we have to understand that God's word must be embraced for us to truly be righteous. We've got to embrace the entire word, all of scripture, Genesis to Revelation. We must accept all that he has given to us, all that he has revealed, all that he has revealed about love. The love of our neighbor, how to love our parents, how to love our foreigners, how to love our enemies. All that he has revealed in the word about holiness, what it means to fear and reverence God. What does it mean to be humble in the presence of God? What does it mean to submit to the God of our salvation? What does it mean to be pure, to worship him? All that the word reveals about mercy, about forgiveness compassion how to be good to others who aren't good to us this is where righteousness is revealed judgment everything that the word says about judgment it's permanence it's certainty it's necessity Everything in judgment in the scriptures that reveals sin and purity and justice and hell and the eternal damnation and the eternal righteousness. All of that is revealed in the word and brothers and sisters in Christ, we must embrace it all. There's not a part of it that we can just say, well, I'm going to leave that part alone. The whole of the word is what makes us righteous. And I know today that there are people who want us to forget about this passage and forget about what he said in Genesis and forget about what he said in Daniel and forget about what he said in Isaiah. But I'm telling you today, it's the whole word. All scripture is God breathed. All scripture is for our prophet. All scripture is given to correct us. This week I was in meditation and uh, I almost said medication. <laughs> I was in meditation in the word of God and I was in 1 Corinthians chapter 15 and in one of the verses it talked about Jesus. All things are subject to Jesus and then Jesus brings all things in subjection to the Father. And I can't tell you it's like an explosion took place where I saw Jesus submitting to the father 
and I got, I, and, I, and it just, it all kinds of implications and applications came to my life, my mind about my own submission to God in light of the fact that my Lord submits to the Father. Am I submitted? Am I obedient? Am I humble? Am I surrendered? Am I sur yielded? I tell you, all a scripture has got to speak. Holy Spirit, speak to us. This is why we've got to meditate upon the word. This is why we got to sing the word. This is why we got to keep reading the word. This is why we got to memorize the word because the word makes us righteous. The world wants to philosophize the world, the, the word of God. The word wants to ignore it. The word wants to make fun of it the word wants to take the punch out of the scripture but I'm telling you all scripture is what makes us complete and ready for every good works remember what Jesus said he said let them see our good works and glorify our father in heaven and when Paul says in 2 Timothy he says all scripture is given by inspiration it's God breathed and what does it do it makes you prepared for every good work so the good works that we are going to do that's going to point them to the father the good works are taught in the word of God you can't just wake up and think you know how to live for God you can't just say what well, I'm going to do what my parents told me and that's going to tell me how to do how to please God. Righteousness comes from the word. Hallelujah. The Holy Spirit wants to get, I don't care how much time you run and jump and shout and speak in tongues and do this. The righteousness, the, the life that the Holy Spirit wants to consume is a life in the word of God. It's like wood. You got to set it on fire to cook and the Holy Spirit wants the life that is in the word because it sets that life on fire and it makes it holy and godly and righteous church the real righteousness embraces the entirety of the word of God except the entire word lastly <laughs> I, I remember a, a picture. I, I saw a weightlifter some years ago and I cracked up. It, it was this dude. He was, I mean, muscle bound. I mean, jacked up from his neck to his shoulders to his pecs and arms and abs. I mean, everything was just muscle, muscular. And then the camera backed away and you saw his legs. <laughs> and his legs were like two sticks and I'm like uh what happened my friend what what happened he 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 he's got muscles up here but no muscles in the legs the thighs the calves the quads none this is the image I want you to have when we read of Jesus speaking about those least in the kingdom. I want, first of all, let, let's read that for a second in Matthew. What does he say? He says, therefore, whoever relaxes one of the least of these commandments and teaches others to do the same will be called least in the kingdom. But whoever does them and teaches them will be called great in the kingdom of heaven for I tell you unless your righteousness exceeds that of the scribes and Pharisees you'll never enter the kingdom of heaven listen to this first of all when Jesus speaks about the least in the kingdom understand that's figurative for saying you're not in it you're 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 not regarded in the kingdom He's referring in strong language to the scribes and Pharisees. I tell you, unless your righteousness exceeds that of the scribes and Pharisees, you'll never enter the kingdom of heaven. He's saying, listen, something is wrong with their righteousness. They've got, they've got one part that they're dealing with, but the other part is totally unaddressed it's incomplete 
like that weightlifter who focus on one part. I've seen weightlifters who have big arms and little everything else, and it just doesn't, it's, it doesn't match. God wants us whole and complete. Jesus called his disciples to not live like people who want to make you think they're righteous. No, he said, I want you to live righteousness because well look what he says here in Matthew 23 and 3 which echoes the same sentiment he said so do and observe whatever they tell you but not the works they do for they preach but do not practice Jesus says he wants whole righteousness they'll preach but they won't practice listen and I'm very much listen as a preacher this this has to hit home for me I can't just get up here and speak to you and then my life be in shambles my life be ungodly and immoral no I've got to have a whole righteousness I can't just have a title or a position or a platform no my life must conform to the righteousness as revealed in Christ through the word of God. He, he says, whoever relaxes one of the least of these commandments and teaches others to do the same will be called least in the kingdom. Listen, but whoever does them and teaches them. Listen, real righteousness calls for us to practice what we learn in the word and not just to practice it, but to teach it. And this is consistent. Listen, we've got to practice what God reveals us to us in the word, what we hear. And it's not enough for you just to listen to the message, but you got to read the scriptures for yourself. And then you got to talk with other brothers and sisters in the Lord about what God is saying in his word to you and to I to the, through the scriptures by the Holy Spirit. That's where righteousness comes from. Where And, and righteousness can't just be theoretical. It can't just be in the mind. It's got to be lived out in the heart and in the life. It's so important that Jesus says those who walk in righteousness and teach righteousness, they are great in my kingdom. Jesus puts position and reputation and knowledge and authority in their proper place. They mean nothing in this kingdom if they are not accompanied by obedience and teaching. And this is very important. You Understanding the word is not enough if you don't obey it. And be very clear. He said, listen, you understand. Don't say you are saved. I don't care how many preachers you repeated after. I don't care how many times you dunked yourself in the water. I don't care how many names or memberships you're on across the city of Greensboro. I don't care who told you you're saved. If you will not submit to Christ the King and walk in his righteousness because he is your Lord and Savior, then you cannot say you are great in his kingdom. Jesus already says you are like the scribes and the Pharisees. You are least in the kingdom of God. And listen, this is consistent. Listen to what Jesus, what the Bible teaches. Look at Deuteronomy 6. In Deuteronomy 6, it's called the Shema. In Deuteronomy 6, verse 6, Moses has taught the church, taught Israel, the church in the desert. And he says, and these words I command you today shall be on your heart. You shall teach, they'll be on your heart. In other words, there you're meditating upon them, you're obeying them. And then he said, Verse seven, you shall teach them diligently to your children and shall talk of them when you sit in your house and when you walk by the way and when you lie down and when you rise. And so you both live it and teach it. In fact, uh, for those of you who say, well, I don't want to be the pastor. I don't want to stand in front of people and preach. Listen, teaching the word of God is not necessarily standing in front of an audience. Teaching the word of God is living it out and having being in a relationship with other people that you will share the word with. That's the teaching that he's referring to. He says, when you're walking with your child, talk to them about the word. Talk with your spouse about the word. Talk with your brothers and sisters of, about the word. 
Yes, Ezra. Look at Ezra 7 and 10. He says the same thing. And Ezra determined in his heart to know the word, to obey the word, Ezra 7 and 10, and to teach the word. Look at 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse 5. In fact, 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse 5, he says, I'm reminded of your sincere faith, a faith that dwelt first in your grandmother Lois and your mother Eunice, and now I am sure dwells in you as well. So his mother and his grandmother had faith. They walked in righteousness. They lived it out sincerely in front of Timothy. Now turn with me to chapter 3, verse 15. And he says this, and how from a child you have been acquainted with the sacred writings, with the word of God, which are able to make you wise for salvation through faith in Jesus Christ. So your mother and grandmother walked in obedience and they taught you the word. And it is through that word and your faith in Christ that you obey him and experience Experience righteousness and that word instructs you in righteousness as we previously saw in verses uh, 16 and 17 of 2 Timothy then you have Matthew going back to Matthew chapter 4 and 19 and we use this verse repeatedly at bridge what do we say he said follow me and I will make you fishers of men follow me obey me learn of me be changed by me and what and then you will teach others you will lead others you will make disciples of others you'll be fishers of men we obey we follow and we teach others i was in a group of with some men last sunday and we were talking sunday night just four of us and and it, uh, five of us, and we're encouraging each other in the word, and we just stopped and basked in how wonderful it is to follow the Lord, to encourage each other, hold each other accountable to the word that God has revealed, and then to, to teach one another, what is God saying to you? What is God saying to me? Church, this is real righteousness. Because real righteousness for the real church of God. We're not playing church. We're not, we're not playing games. We're not trying to mesmerize you. We're not trying to get you to shake, rattle, and roll. We believe the Holy Spirit will get a hold of you and change your life and will use you to change others. So as we begin this new series, I want you to answer the question, does the Lord see you as truly righteous when he looks at you? Does he see someone who knows Christ and follows him, obeys him, fears him, loves him, and helps others know him? Does who he is and what he said set the standard for your life and my life? Does it determine what is right and wrong? And listen, this is the opposite of our culture. Our culture has situational ethics. They get to determine, my circumstance determines what's right and wrong. No, I'll tell you what determines what's right and wrong. The word of God, all the scripture, it teaches me what's right, what's wrong, what's godly, what's worldly, what's of the Lord. Real righteousness is not about our status and opinion of others. It's about practicing what Jesus gave us and taught us to believe that we might follow him and follow his ways. And let me tell you, yes, I'm a pastor, but that is a role that God has called me to function in and to fulfill. But be clear about this. I am just a child of God like you, and I will be held accountable. In fact, even more accountable because I'm teaching more. We are called to real righteousness. Can I tell you, this is a holiness church. This is a church that is in awe of the revelation of Jesus Christ. And we will not be moved from being in awe of him. And we will live in light of what he reveals us by the Holy Spirit and the scriptures. Today, can we pray about being truly righteous can we pray about the righteousness that really makes us salt of the earth 
and light to the world. Some of you may say, Pastor, I'm not righteous right now. I've sinned. Remember 1 John chapter 1, verse 9. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us of our sins and to cleanse us of all unrighteousness. So, so your failure doesn't mean you can't be righteous. We run, the answer is run to Jesus. But who is he? He is our mercy. He is our forgiveness. He is our righteous. He's the Lamb of God who takes away our sins that we might become righteous and then live in righteousness and holiness. Would you join me in prayer today as we go in this journey through this word? God, make us really righteous that we might be salt and light. Father, in the name of Jesus, I lift up the Bridge of Hope Church. You have placed us where you have. You have planted us and rooted us where we are that we might be light and salt. And and, and what we radiate is the righteousness of God. As we see Jesus, he changes us. He teaches us. He said, take his yoke upon him and learn of him. Oh God, that we may learn of Jesus and stand in awe of him and bow down and obey and be rebuked and corrected and transformed. Oh God, for whoever's listening today, as they place faith completely in Jesus, regardless of what they've done in their past, regardless of what their past sins were, regardless of what their past lives are. God, may we not try to fake it like the scribes and Pharisees, but may we truly turn to you, Jesus, and say, you, oh my Lord, would you change me? And may your word, hallelujah, cleanse and transform me. For I can't live on food and meat alone, but I've got to live on the word that comes out of your mouth. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Hello, Bridge of Hope family and friends. Thank you for joining us today for worship and service. We are so glad to have you here with us. Let me share with you some upcoming events and announcements that we would love for you to be a part of. Our adult Bible study will be held on Wednesday at 7 p.m. Our seniors Bible study will also be held on Wednesday at 7 p.m. Our middle schoolers will hold their Bible study on Sunday at 5.30 p.m. If you haven't already heard, we are now back to one in-person service at 10 a.m. Pre-registration and temperature checks are not required. However, for all in-person, indoor events, we will be asking you wear a mask until further notice. So we encourage you to come back as you feel safe doing so. All of this information can also be found within our weekly newsletter, which comes out every Tuesday. So if you're not already receiving that, we encourage you to sign up so you don't miss out on all the great things happening at the bridge. We also love to hear from you. So connect with us via any of our social media networks. And as always, thank you for joining and have a blessed week. Thank you, Sister Jessica and everyone who's contributed to our service uh, today. Uh, I want to encourage you. uh, You've heard uh, Bishop Johnson lift up our offering. I want to thank God for all of your generosity. I want to remind you of uh, an area of contribution beyond your tithes and giving. It says our deficit. Uh, We did have, we're in our third quarter and uh, we are currently in a deficit in the budget and we want to build that up. And so if you would kindly, in addition to your tithes and offering, many have pledged to contribute towards that so that we can get out of that. If you'd like to contribute towards that, we'd much appreciate it, especially online. Uh, Our staff and leaders, we want to continue to minister to you and we ask that you be partners. There's much more we'd like to do in the new year online in our digital ministry and connecting with 
with you and helping you connect with one another. And so please, we ask that you would help us uh, by, by faithfully giving uh, to the ministry of the Bridge of Hope Church. We thank God for you. Continue to love each other. Continue to love God with all your heart. Let's go before the Lord. Father, bless us today. As we leave your presence, go with us that we might walk in righteousness wherever we go and men and women and young and old would see your good works, our good works, and glorify our Father in heaven. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. God bless your bridge. Have a wonderful week.